Propelio TV is sponsored by Noble Mortgage and Investments, Batch Group Tracing, Think Multifamily, CreativeCastro.com, and Life Inner. Okay, guys, first up, uh, you guys excited to be here tonight? Yeah. Awesome, good. So, um, our first act is, no, uh, we have, uh, one, one of the things that's important in real estate, do you guys ever feel like, oh, I wonder, for those of you that haven't gotten started, or maybe some of those of you that are active, is now a good time to get started, is now a time to quit my job and do this, is now a time to lean into this, or whatever, and the truth is, is there is, uh, you know, it's always a good time to get started in real estate investing if you buy right, it all comes down to buying right, and the reality is, is, um, What's really important is to look at data, what trends are happening and things like that. But in our business, we're, for the most part, we're traders. Like we can, traders with a D. So we can uh, buy and sell houses at a discount if you can get them at a discount in any market, right? But it's important to keep your pulse on what's going on in the market. And that is our first speaker is uh, Mr. Tyler Waldrup. He, he's an economist for Propelio and SMU, and he's going to share with us what's going on in the market. So let's give him a hand. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Okay, so i just do a quick market update, and it's just to give you guys, again, all of this is uh, data. It's on the uh, NTREIS website, which is the North Texas Real Estate Information Systems website. But I put in a little bit of other stuff, too, and it kind of just tells us a temperature of the market. Uh, to date, it's always a trailing uh, month. In Dallas, basically in the DFW area, these are the key metrics, and these are always the things that we want to look out for in here. New listings are up. Pending sales are down. Closed sales are up slightly. Days on market, 47. That's up 20.5%. And the supply of homes, what, a, what the supply of homes means is if you stopped selling today, if you stopped every house today and you sold the current inventory, it would take 3.4 months to actually get rid of every house. A healthy market is around six to nine months of inventory. So in Dallas, you can see there are some indicators that are a little bit, eh, how's it going? But... 3.4 months, that's pretty low. At one point, I believe in 2000, early 2018, it was 1.9 months. So, uh, again, Dallas County specifically, the things that are always disturbing to me are this right here, keeps going up. $382,000 for average house in Dallas, Texas. Um, percent of original list, that's gone down a little bit. Inventory has gone up. And again, 3.3 months supply, 42 days on market. As an investor, what does that tell you? That's holding costs. That's, you need to plan that into your actual budget. Tarrant County, uh, 34 days on market. Average price, 300,000. That's pretty high. That seems high to me. And inventory, again, has increased. Closed sales have gone down. All of this is just a little bit of, of cooling. All of the predictive, everything that's going to be going on into late 2020 in DFW, and you've got to understand Texas is its own country. It's, I believe, literally, it's, it's, it's GDP, which is the gross domestic product, is higher than Canada and uh, South Korea. So it's, it's, a different, it's a different planet, basically. Collin County, Collin County has always had issues. I mean, they've just, this price just keeps going up. Uh, month's supply keeps going up, and they have 53 days on market. And I think that may be a price point issue, but there's just a ton of new builds up, up north and also in Denton County. A lot going on, 45 days on market. Again, these are all just things to take into account when you are planning as an investor, planning for your holding costs. Um, none of this is scary. And again, all of this is available free. You don't have to be an MLS member or anything. You just search the real estate information systems data go to any county in Texas, and it will have this exact breakdown so you can see. Now, this isn't going to tell you anything. This, isn't going to, this doesn't mean should you buy a house. This doesn't mean should you not buy a house. But I think this is important to plan and strategize. Um, I thought this was just kind of interesting to give us a little bit of perspective in terms of Dallas or Texas with the rest of the country. So what do you get for $200,000 in, in other markets? So... I listed it sort of with biggest square footage. So in San Antonio, Texas, you can get about 3,200 square feet for $200,000. It's about $61.55 a square foot. Houston, it's about $95 a square foot. Dallas, 18. Dallas falls in line with the Phoenix. Dallas is about like Phoenix. I'm sorry, no, Dallas is like Las Vegas. Austin is like Phoenix. About, they're about similar in price and square foot. 
Then we get to somewhere like Miami, Portland, Denver, Seattle. Seattle, that surprises me. 525 square feet, that's like a master bedroom in Texas. And then, I mean, then we get down to like here. 126 square feet, $1,500 a square foot. Like a square foot is like this, and I'm going to pay $1,500 for it. That's insane. But again, this just gives you perspective. I know in Texas, like, prices are heated, and I literally have to go do my tax dispute tomorrow with, with Texas because they're about to drive me crazy. But prices are going up. Um, Mike, have you, as an investor, I mean, have you noticed prices changing, going up, down, temperature-wise? What what's your opinion? Uh, I think the retail market has slowed down a little bit. It's been, like, last fall, if you guys, for those of you that are active, last fall was, like... We just hit a wall in November. But I think things have slowed down a little bit. You guys, some of you that are active seeing that? Like, things are moving a little more fluidly again? Yeah. It always recovers in June and July. It always goes a little bit back up. Um, again, price is really nothing other than an indicator of supply and demand. But again, these indicators are that supply has outpaced demand just slightly. I think in Manhattan, the price per square inch has gone down a little bit. Per since, square uh, foot, yeah. not per square inch. If it was per oh, square, per square inch, inch, okay, yeah. We'd be a whole, this would be a whole different story. But yes, per, per square foot. But anyway, I'm just saying, basically, inventories are out, uh, inventory is growing faster. Supply is growing faster than demand. There's still room for growth, specifically in Texas, well into 2020. Nobody's predicting any kind of crash. I mean, there may be some cooling and plateaus and always related to some sort of... Does anybody know what show this was? Does anybody remember this show? Okay, well, the theme song was with a little help from our friends. So... Use your networking time wisely when you're here. And I mean, that's all, that's all I've got. Unless you, does anybody have any questions? Questions, anybody have any questions they want to ask? Like existing home sales versus new construction? Yeah, that's a good question. I was thinking the same thing actually. So he asked, are the sales different for new construction versus um, existing homes? New, the pending sales data is always for Pending sales and new, new construction. New construction, and I had kind of an inside source on this, is going crazy. But like I was saying, that's in Collin and Denton County. In Dallas, you've got to think about it this way. The, the type of the existing home sales that are taking place um, are just what, pe what, what investors are buying. So in Dallas, specifically, there's not a, there's not a ton of new construction unless somebody's buying, basically people are buying and redoing houses. Now where I live, they're tearing stuff down and rebuilding. New home sales in North Texas are going insane. I think I've been with like Prosper, Little Elm, people are like, this is crazy. So that's why you're seeing longer days on market, higher sales prices in Collin County, right? Because that's a lot more new build construction. So one thing to consider with all this data, data is always good. But consider, as real estate investors, we buy from distressed sellers. So of the roughly 400 houses that I flipped here, We've bought those on average for 42 cents on the dollar, right? And now that, they all needed repairs too, so uh, it's not like that was all profit, right? But at the end of the day, people are dying, getting divorced, people are inheriting houses, they're landlords that have a tenant that tore their house up again. There's always distressed sales that will go on. A lot of that activity you don't see on the MLS here, which is where we, that's where I operate, so. so and that's, right. okay, go ahead. So one of the things that, that you could do, this came up in uh, my mastermind with some guys that are doing this. Now, you're always at the mercy of what you're going to see when you Google this, but just Google like Dallas real estate trends. And if you see some headlines, because this is what happened. The truth is, is for several years when the market was down, the, the news is still talking about how bad the market is. And then it starts to talk about how good it is. Now, the truth is, it's not as good as it used to be. It's slowing down a little bit. And so what you want to find are those uh, articles that are coming out that are saying, I literally saw it, like this is, this is about a month ago, I was at Starbucks and I saw a newspaper and it was like, this was a national newspaper, real estate crashing. It's like, what? But if you show that to a seller, like, well, things aren't as good as they used to be, you know? So anyway, this person was printing out a Google search for <laughs> That's Dallas good. real estate market. And if you start to see a bunch of headlines of market slowing and all this stuff, you could use that potentially as collateral to say, 
might not be as good as you thought it was, or maybe you shouldn't wait any longer, right? So food for thought. And I always tell investors, never fear the data, because whatever happens, whether it's a crash or the market's on fire, investors win either way. If everybody starts losing their house, I mean, it's going crazy. Any, any other questions? Awesome, guys. Let's give it up for Tyler. My, oh, here we go. Thank you, sir. Propelio TV is sponsored by Noble Mortgage and Investments, Batch Cup Tracing, Think Multifamily, CreativeCashflow.com, and Lifener. Want to keep up with the latest Propelio TV daily? Be sure to subscribe and click that bell.